on this episode of Bondi Vet. A desperate fight to save the life of a hit run victim. It's just incredible that someone could run over a little dog like this and not even stop. Chris catches up with a lame lorikeet. If he can't fly, he can't get away. He's dog food. Little Zoe battles a poisonous snake bite. <laughs> and schools in for Bondi's puppies. That's Harvey, what can I say? Lorikeets are also really, really good biters too. Good Samaritans Brian and son Tom have found a rainbow lorikeet hopping around their backyard. The indignant bird was almost breakfast for their puppy. Can you think why if a dog was chasing one it wouldn't just fly off? Honestly because he just can't. And I think the real trick here is working out why he can't run away. He looks as though he's got the muscles to fly. Yep. He looks as though he's got the will to fly, but for some reason he just can't. What Chris needs to know is whether his noisy patient is grounded forever. Either he's flown into a window and ended up in their backyard, or he's picked up a condition that a lot of, lot of rainbow lorikeets get, which causes this very strange paralysis where they just can't fly. They look good. I mean, he's almost fat when you look at him. He's in that good a condition. If he can't fly, he can't get away. So these guys have done exactly the right thing in bringing him in because he's dog food, really, running around like he is. Meanwhile, at the Bondi Referral Hospital sash, <coughs> seven-year-old Zoe has been rushed in, suffering from a snake bite. Definitely killed by something, dog or owner. The Bichon Freeze has been looked after by vet Darren Foster and emergency nurse Jess. Are the owners here with the dog? Yes, he's out at reception. I was at work and my wife was at home and she just went outside for some reason and the little snake was curled up and Zoe started foaming from the mouth. Zoe was attacked by a deadly red belly black snake. If she doesn't receive antivenom soon, she'll suffer an agonising death. The anti-serum needs to go straight into the bloodstream via a catheter. But Zoe's resistance is making it almost impossible to save her life. Birds are tricky because they're so fragile and they're, they're great actors. Chris is hoping that antibiotics and rest will get the lame lorikeet back in the air they will hide any signs of sickness for as long as possible until it's just too much for them. So pretty much if a bird's sick, it's critical. <laughs> for now, the screaming patient will be put safely to bed in a cage at the back of the clinic. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> Vet nurse Neil Coy is not amused. Hey, Neil, did you have a lorikeet? Where has it got out? Yeah, I just didn't know where it was put. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. <laughs> it's in here now. Get that bloody camera off it. Sure it got out, okay? Yeah, I know it got out. Is that my fault? Probably, okay? Laura Kate fits through a cage. Small difference, but it does make a big difference in the end when he gets out and makes his leap of faith. But is he okay? Can you certify he's now okay? Yes, he's fine. The question now is whether the escape artist will ever be airborne again. Touch and go, she's, she's in a bad way. She's probably really, yeah, a really serious head trauma. A hit run victim has just arrived at the clinic. Her circulation, it's, it's deteriorating. So we've just got to stabilise that, get the best out of it we can. OK, so I've got the catheter in there. It's going to allow the drugs to get in there a lot more quickly. Come on, buddy, come on, mate. 
come on. Okay, so you've seen him on the road? Yes, and the others were just standing there. Dawn Hardy and her daughter Fiona rescued the road accident victim. Someone actually ran over its whole head and then just kept driving and just left it there. And they just said, it doesn't matter because it's just going to die. And I went, you can't say that. Now, has he got worse since you've been with him? No, he just wants to bite me. Just wants to bite you. It's the thanks you get, isn't it? <laughs> you've done the right thing in bringing him in, though, so thank you. You might have saved his life. It's just incredible that someone could run over a little dog like this and not even stop. Chris administers morphine to control the pain and large doses of cortisone to limit the swelling on the brain. He's just going to, I guess, trust us right now to know that we're trying to do the best we can for him. Go on, mate. That bruising, that area there should be white. He's got an enormous amount of trauma to his skull. I mean, it's amazing he's actually alive. He's a walking miracle, or a lying one right now. Isn't he? That blackness there could even be rubber off a car tyre, so... And it looks like most of the impact's gone through his, his skull there, but... the wheels managed to find a way to hit there as well. With the dog's life hanging in the balance, Chris hasn't had a chance to check the sex. Turns out it's a little girl. See that stiffness and that rigidity? It's a really upper motor neuron, so... And that could be skull trauma, it could be high-level spinal injuries up here. It may just be all shock and just as a result of the, the head trauma, which would be great. Can we just get that scanner in here, Neil? Neil scans for a microchip, which contains details for the terrier's owner. At last, some good news. Bye now. Uh, the dog's registered, but they're not able to contact the owners yet, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So, I'm just going to have a look here and see if there's a, a response to the light here. There's a slight response there, not a huge one though. The fact there is a response there, I guess, is a, is a positive, but there's a lot, lot more negatives than there are positives right now. How are you going? Stephen, is it? Yeah. How are you going? I'm Chris. Owner Steve Duggan has finally been found. Bad little bit of time here, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right, do you want to come through and we'll have a look at, we'll have a look at Jackie for you? She had a, a massive impact on that, on that car. And mm. I mean, the fact she's even here is, is a minor miracle in itself, but she's smelling you now. Hello, Jackie. Jackie. The way she responded to Steve's smell, I thought was just amazing. She was using every last bit of energy to get up and see him and, ju and just be close to him. And then Steve tells me she's just 14 months old. Jackie's his best buddy, and that's cruel. I got her as a companion, because I live by myself. I wanted a dog to uh, have a bit of company. I know, Jax. I know. Oh, you're always so excited to see me, aren't you, Jackie, eh? Unconditional love. Over at Sash, Zoe, the seven-year-old Bichon Freeze, is being treated for a snake bite. Without anti-venom, she'll die. Going to be brave this time? This is Darren and Jess's second attempt to insert a life-saving catheter. So just try and tap the head to take the emphasis off what's going on on the leg. All right. Without the catheter, Zoe won't get anti-venom she desperately needs. Hey, buddy. You're looking a bit brighter, though, aren't you? All right, you come through with me. It's crunch time for the grounded lorikeet. After rest and antibiotics, he needs to prove he can use those wings. If trauma, like flying into a window or being hit by a car, was the cause of his inability to fly, that should have worn off by now. So when I get him out in a second and see if he can fly, if he can't, it's a virus. If he can, it looks good. Let's see what he can produce here for us. It's not a bad weapon. As far as test flights go, it's not too bad. So, he probably didn't really enjoy being interrupted like that, but that's not a bad little effort. Even though that's pretty good news, the fact he can make those little flying bursts, 
I'm not going to release him straight away. The simple fact that once he's released, he's going to be very hard to catch again, and he's just his strength isn't there yet. So let's give him a few more flights. This can become his little practice aerodrome. Once he can make good flying efforts and fly good distances, then he can go. Police are now investigating Jackie's hit run. Steve's friend had taken the terrier for a walk and tied her up outside a local hotel for just a few minutes. Security camera vision shows a stranger untying the terrier and stealing her lead. Why do you steal a three dollar leash? It's just criminal. How are you doing, Jax? Thank you. Obviously, she can't be anything like she was before. Mm. But I'm just worried about her quality of life. You know. I'd love to be able to just give Steve some sort of reassurance that everything's going to be OK, but it's, it's just not really possible right now. Stay there, Jackie. You guys have a sleepy. As Steve says goodbye to Jackie, he knows his best friend needs a miracle. She's yeah. had a pretty traumatic day. She's been bitten by a snake and then she's been dragged to one veterinarian and then she's been taken to another place and she's been left here and now we're sticking needles in her. And she doesn't have any idea why we're doing it or what we're doing it for. Hey. Over at Sash, Zoe the snake slayer is fighting the catheter. Without it, she can't get the life-saving anti-venom she needs so urgently. This is Darren's third attempt. Mm. You might need to get somebody else to use a hand because she's going to be silly. Yeah, she's going to pull off. This time, Darren calls for backup. Yeah. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. A bit more relaxed now. Good girl. Good girl. Good puppy. Now Zoe's anti-venom treatment can finally begin. Attach her life-saving anti-venom. At the moment, we're just about to give her some methadone so that she'll be more comfortable because her muscles are breaking down at the moment and that can be quite painful. Good girl. Good girl. Hey, did you feel that one? So that'll make her sleepy, a little bit more relaxed and she'll have a nice, comfortable day. Back at Bondi, Jackie has stabilised enough for Chris to carry out some crucial x-rays. Three, one, two, three. So Jackie's improving. She's somehow beaten the head trauma, the concussion, and now she's doing her best to convince me that she can beat this whole thing. But there's one final test, and that's the x-rays. We've got to work out what's going on with that spine. X-ray. I think the thing I find most touching about Jackie at the moment is the fact that she, she can't see, but the only comfort she's got is that she can smell things and you go near and she has a sniff of you and she has a little lick of you as if to say, you know, are you helping me now? It's not looking good. That's a really serious spinal fracture there. So she's got a severed spinal cord. As if she hasn't been through enough already. Exactly. I mean, she's tough, but she's not that tough. Mm, she's fought so hard as well. Yeah, it's I mean, very it's fair. Just, you can't work miracles. Not fair. <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. I'm sorry, you're a little fighter though, aren't you, huh? You want to hang on, you really do. I guess what's infuriating in this situation is that she was just doing what she felt natural. She was let off the leash by, by some idiot who decided to take matters into his own hands, who knows why, and she's the victim of some person's stupidity and thoughtlessness. And, you know, he doesn't have to see this, he doesn't have to deal with the sight we see here with this little girl in trouble and, and it's just, it's senseless. It never gets any easier. In fact, it sometimes gets harder, particularly as you get to know the animal and the people involved. Um, we know with the animal that we would never let them suffer, 
um, but it's really hard for the people. That's, that's what breaks your heart, it breaks my heart. Jackie's owner, Steve, decides to put his best friend out of her pain. It's been a traumatic day for Sarah, but tonight she has one final appointment she would never cancel. Oh, Vegas! Hello! Oh, he's handsome. However tough the day, puppy school never fails to lift her spirits. I actually get really happy again with puppy school. It's like a, a buzz. Oh, oi, oi, oi. People get puppies with the intention that they're like little stuffed toys and they're, they're not because there's poo coming out, they're barking and chewing. Oh, it's very full on. <laughs> Constantly retrieving my dog from attacking other dogs. <laughs> they're full on. It's like bringing a baby into your household and we just get people at their wits end, take help me. And just give, like, we'll just give them some time out. <laughs> hey, so what you've got to do is scream like a puppy so it's... Some of them are really good, but I tend to get the naughty ones in my class. Harvey gets up to pretty much everything he's not supposed to. Um, his favourite thing at the moment is um, chewing just the left leg of my jeans. I was considering buying a new sofa. That's on hold. He's ripped the other one to shreds at the moment, so he won't sleep in his own bed. He just gives you those little eyes and you think, oh, it's OK, you don't need to learn that. That's Harvey, what can I say? When you gotta go, you gotta go. And twice, apparently. Didn't quite get it all out first time round. Now, how's everyone going with their toilet training? We've had him finally like a week and a half, and within the first, uh, first couple of days, we've had him going outside. At puppy school in Bondi, class has been called to order. Well, almost. <laughs> Tonight, there's a big test. The puppy's owners need to get their pupils to come to them and then sit down. Surely that can't be too hard. That's what she wants to do. Bad boy Yogi gets it half right. Little Winston's quite happy to come, but still not sure about the sit bit. Good boy. We're all right, we're maybe a C plus or a B right now, but we'll get up there. But Harvey is surprising his mum, Maureen, with the perfect performance. Good boy! You can see everyone bonds with their animals and each other. And a lot of them actually can become friends. Now that puppy school's over, I'm absolutely exhausted. So I think it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> Come on then, let's go. Zoe, it's time for you to go home. Come on, sweetie. Just a day after her showdown with a deadly snake, and Zoe is back to full health. Come and see everyone who's come to see you. Big family reunion. What do you reckon, Mesh? Can you see Zoe? Let's see if you can see her. Zoe! Hello! Hello! <laughs> it's a hero's welcome for Zoe the snake slayer who overcame a red-bellied black snake and a chronic fear of needles. She looks just so good. Um, I can't believe how well she looks, considering what she's just been through. Amazing, just amazing. Harvey, it's bedtime. Be nice with it, please. It's time to check up on Harvey after graduating from puppy school. Harvey. I can't sleep like that, Harvey. There still seems to be some chewing issues. I'd like to have a new sofa one day. Just don't know when that one day will be. New sofa? A few years yet, Mum, apparently. Harvey's ready for the weather. <laughs> I love him. He's amazing. All right, you can't sleep. There you go. Come on. 
think someone just recognised you up there. Are relatives of yours? A few days later, the lucky lorikeet that was found hopping around a local backyard is ready for release. The normally noisy bird is strangely silent as it's cleared for takeoff. Oh, it's biting me. There's, there's no, no such thing as gratitude in the wildlife world, unfortunately. One, two, three, cut. And he's away. Put so much work in, they just go so quickly. But it's good. And he flew incredibly well there. So I'm sure we'll have a good time. Next time on Bondi Vet, Chris goes home to the bush and gets involved in a tricky birth. I'll go with mine. I'm not pushing. And a worrying time for Lisa as she tries to save a very sick kitten. It's a fatal disease and it's just not something that I want to go and tell his owners.